Hi guys, this is Karen and today I'm going to be doing a first listen to EXO's fifth studio album, Don't Mess Up My Temper. I'm super excited. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these. I know, I know, and I know a lot of you are going to get mad because you're like, oh my gosh, you didn't do this first listen, you didn't do that first listen, you didn't do this first listen. Listen, guys. <laughs> when I say honest to God, like, it's been this last couple of months, yeah, this last couple of months has, has been a trial, okay? My motivation level is just not where it's at usually especially the, like maybe like in previous months or in maybe last year it's just not there so like i said in one of my videos that so as i said in one of my videos that you know these first listens will just come as they come because i can't promise anything i really can't there's really no good excuse it's just i've been going through a lot okay and a lot of the times i don't have the same like concentration level or just the time to stand and film for an hour and a half usually uh when i do my first assistance because obviously i'd like to do them quite detailed and stuff and um yeah it's just not been a right time or i've never just not felt well i've just not you know just been in the mood to do first listens another reason that i've been kind of iffy when it comes to doing first listens is because i've got sciatica in one of in my right leg like it's annoying and today it's actually messing up i try and avoid standing for too long or filming too long on my leg because it does get to a point where it's like getting ridiculous but yeah i just want to explain that because i know some of you are disappointed that i haven't done like a few first listens but like i said i don't prom promise these things because i just don't know when i'm gonna do them i don't even know when i'm gonna edit this because i'm trying to keep my weekends free to actually enjoy them and not spend them like basically always editing um so yeah we'll see how it goes i'll try and get my motivation level to where it needs to be next year I'm, I'm working towards it but yeah just bear with me guys but anyways yes sorry about that just wanted to explain that you know before we get into this video so exo is back it's been a very very long time oh my god it's been so long and i'm so glad they are back so i've already listened to tempo both the mandarin version and the korean version i've already explained how i felt about the song and the different sections in it i thought it was a very interesting track um and you know it had like just a very very cool element is it my favorite type of track no not at all i don't think so but like it definitely is probably my favorite when it comes to the harmonies in there like there was just so many really cool vocal performances and then i really enjoyed the rap parts as well so i think the production was really interesting and cool and just fresh and i thoroughly enjoyed like the sort of concept that we're going for there but before i move on to the next song i do want to give a massive shout out to jq penamoko oh and Yu Young Jin, who wrote the lyrics for Tempo, um, that's really cool. Um, Pelimoko is a K hip hop rapper slash singer. He's actually worked with SM quite a bit, especially on SM Station. You should check out his stuff. Yu Young Jin obviously is the veteran, you know, producer in SM. He's basically like the RB godfather <laughs> in SM. If you guys know anything about SM, you should know who Yu Young Jin is. Um, not really too sure about JQ, but I think I've definitely seen their name. Um, in some of these before uh, music was by Jamil DG Chamas who has worked with SM artists quite a lot and um, Levin Kali um, Tay Jasper Adrian McKinnon and MZMC um, Tay Jasper Adrian McKinnon and MZMC work with um, um, EXO quite a lot I think they've also worked with um, Taman and Shiny before um, so yeah um, they're quite regulars when it comes to you know producer for SM so um shout outs to them for you know the really cool production um but yeah now that we've kind of discussed that let's just move on to the next song which is sign this is the part of the album i've been listening to at all so sign was written by jq and um who also wrote um tempo and mola or make you mind works or who is part of make you mind works i'm not sure if that's like a collective music by harvey mason jr um jr or jr um kevin randolph patrick jq smith um Devane Whitmore, um Britt Burton and Andrew Hay. <laughs> okay, okay big here. I apologize for the fireworks, I'm really sorry. Okay, so I feel like doing a first listen today is going to be a fail because these bloody fireworks, okay, are just going on and on and on and on and on and I can barely listen properly to what's going on so I think I'm going to have to pause it here and then 
come back tomorrow. A few moments later. Okay, I'm gonna try listening to the sign again because the fireworks have stopped. I don't know if it's gonna stop for the rest of the night. I'm just gonna try. If it doesn't work, then I'm gonna try and film this tomorrow. But let's let's hope. Fingers crossed. Oh, that was nice, Chen. Baekhyun leading the chorus here. Who sings this part? Is it just part of the demo? Do you hear my man? Do you hear my man? Kyung Soo in this part. Oh, Shumin! Oh, Kyung Soo! Oh my god! Okay, Sehun! Ooh, I like that! Okay, now we've actually listened to it properly um, and I got to actually hear the stuff I wanted to hear without you know, the fireworks you know, disturbing me in the background. Um, yeah, that definitely sounded better the second time I've listened to it now um, and obviously without the distractions. But um, yeah, it was a very interesting production, very grimy, very gritty um, and just kind of like hard hitting. Um, not what I was expecting to hear after... Um, tempo but definitely carries along with the theme I was expecting and um, with you know the the concept of tempo um yeah the very heavy bass line that you know just kind of repeats the, the, the whole way through it's kind of like a really pulsating beat that just carries on um I really 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 enjoyed the fact that um during the chorus it was basically all of them singing I love when a, a chorus feels like really um meaty and full what like I, compared to when it's just maybe two or three people just harmonizing it's really nice when you get like five members or more singing that entire chorus like it just sounds really good i don't know if maybe it was just only a few of them and then it was kind of amplified to or edited to make it seem that way but it did definitely seem like most of the group was singing during that part and obviously there's always that one person that leads the the chorus so there was one part where it was i think it was baekhyun and then, then there was another part where i think it was kyungsu um, leading the chorus and uh, yeah I think it just alternated with the different um, members of vocal line um, which was really cool is it one of my favorite um, b-side tracks I don't think so um, I think it actually kind of fits in with exact um, it kind of gives me like a can't, can't bring me down type of vibe uh, whereas like can't bring me down is actually more um, EDM heavy he like heavy bass line I think it's like a happy medium um, of a track um, but it's still on, on that same scale as can't bring me down um, but yeah it was still interesting like I'm not completely blown away by it I feel like the more I listen to it the more I enjoy it but it's still pretty cool that so the next track is Ooh La 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 and I've heard some really really good stuff about this song and I think they're promoting this as well uh, lyrics are by Huang Yubin music by Jamil Digi Chamas Andrew Bassi Justin Lucas, Anthony Pavels, and MZMC. Andrew Bazzi, um, some of you may know him as the singer Bazzi, who wrote the song Mine, or you've probably heard um, Do Young do a cover of that, and we all kind of lost our minds because the lyrics were interesting. Um, but Bazzi, yeah, has um, collaborated with EXO before, and he also um, took part in the writing for The Eve. Um, so yeah, really cool artist. Um, so I'm guessing this is maybe R&B-ish, because anytime Bazzi's on the track, it's usually an R&B song, so I'm gonna hoping that it is, but yeah, I'm super excited for this one. Okay, the way it's starting. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm giving us soul tree. Oh, oh, Kai. Excuse you. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. 
Ooh, it's kind of dreamy. I like it. Ooh. Ooh, I love the a uh hot -huh, like. Oh. Okay. Okay, Chinese. I like it when Chinese sings. Love that little guitar in the background as well. Oh! The background work was me. Okay, Chen Yo and Chen. Okay, vocalist guy. I like that the way that ended actually. It was a very chill, understated bop. I like the like slight bossa nova elements to it. Like it definitely had like that Latin um, influence there. It just you know it just kind of made you feel like you were floating on some sort of wave or something. Like I just really enjoyed that vibe. Oh, but the harmonies, the background harmonies, and the way they were singing ooh la la la, and then the aha and the oohs. Like I love that part. Like I really really enjoyed them harmonizing and just making beats um, with your own voices I really really enjoy that when I listen to uh, groups it's one of my favorite things about just listen to a group um, harmony like it's oh I don't know but I I really enjoyed that um, this song kind of reminds me of like a more um, flirty sister of like she's dreaming do you know what I mean like it has that same sort of calming vibe of, of like she's dreaming and um, what um, is it walk on memories but like it's definitely more fun than those songs if that makes any sense but yeah yeah that was really interesting song and i actually i really enjoyed that actually vocal line again killed it and it was really nice to have chanyo actually singing on this more than he was rapping which was really cool i don't know if i had singing that much actually no i did but um yeah that was really cool okay so the next song is gravity and this one was written by chanyo and kim minjong and the music by london noise these and age of okay these three are like one of my favorite producers at least of like the new like lot of like sm producers like these three when they come together they tend to make some of my favorite songs so i'm super excited so let's go oh okay it's more like an 80s vibe about it And Big Hyun with his little like ad libs and runs. That was really cool. I really like the vocal arrangement on this actually and how well it fits with the the actual music production. Okay. Ooh, this part. That part. Would they harmonize with that as well? Pay attention to those background harmonies. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey! What? Hey! I'm gonna hit that nerd chat chat.
This production is sick. I like it. Oh my god! Wow! Oh my god! Can I just say I really love EXO's vocal line? Like I really, really, really appreciate the the great vocals that they deliver. Honestly, like oh my god! Like that's one of the reasons why I generally enjoy listening to EXO albums because I just know like if anything else, the vocals will always be pristine. They will always be on point. The harmonies, the ad libs, the runs will always be fucking pristine. But yeah, that production was really really fun to listen to actually. Um, you guys know I'm like obsessed with like 80s synth pop, just anything 80s, I'm absolutely obsessed with it, at least music wise. So anything that kind of gives me like a throwback feel to that era, I will, I'm all over it. Like, But this one actually, although it had that kind of element, there were so many different cool elements to it, like a way it would like do a little pause or just kind of just veer off into this like other other you know sound or melody and then go back to the original like i really really enjoy when songs do that and they kind of mess with you but they do it in such a way that it doesn't completely like throw you off the entire song like i really really enjoyed that um vocally let me tell you baekhyun was having the fucking time of his life on this song he was giving me everything oh my god like this was his song i loved it i loved the rap as well i'm not sure if in um Chanyeol just did the rap sections of the song but i'm not entirely sure but shout outs to Chanyeol for writing it so the song was kind of talking about how this girl kind of basically was kind of playing with your feelings like you, you know you, you said you know i was your future um so at the moment what am i like your past like you know you kind of lied to me like i thought this was going somewhere and, and then obviously it didn't seen that way to you it was definitely was a roller coaster of a song and actually the song sounds way way brighter than you know the actual lyrics are but um yeah i like that sort of contrast but mainly for me i was just really having the time of my life with, like you know just jam into the song i just feel like this song would be so great just to you know listen you know listen to when you're just driving or you know you just need like a quick pick me up um and you just yeah just need like a boost and i just feel like the vocals in here will definitely give you a boost, but yeah, a really, really fun song to listen to. Okay, so the next song is With You. There's another song written by Chanyo. You see Chanyo out here getting his, his checks, you know, getting his checks. And Kim Minji, um, also um, produced by um, Chanyo and Sons of Sonics, and arrangement by Sons of Sonics as well. Okay, so this, you know, I think Chanyo's first um, composition for the group. I know he's done, you know, his own little thing here and there, but I don't think he's actually composed for the group um, before, if I remember, remember correctly. So this is really, really cool. I like how it's going up here. Yeah? I like Shumin's tone here. Okay. Chili Chen Chen. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. I don't know if I feel about, about this beat right here. This fast paced beat. I think I'll actually like it without it. Because I do enjoy the underlying melody. Oh, oh it's very cute. Okay. Dio. Ooh, new beat? There's so much going on in this song for me. Like, I don't know what to concentrate on. Wow, okay. That was a mix mash of different beats. I was not expecting that. Actually, I think that would definitely be my least favourite of... of this ones I've heard so far 
because I think if they didn't have that fast paced and um, beat on it, like the really, really, really quick one, um, I think I would have enjoyed it a little bit more because I felt like it just kind of distorted the entire song for me. Um, and I felt like uh, after initially hearing it and like realizing that that beat wasn't for me, I was, I was straining to just pay attention to like the underlying melody and the underlying like production and just the singing. I feel like this is one of those songs that's going to be like polarizing, like some people are really going to like it, some people are really going to hate it. Um, or just be in between like it's kind of how I feel about um, Cloud Night which I still to this day even though it's been like two years I still can't really like you know really enjoy that song I don't know it's it's definitely interesting and I think you know that addition of that ec that new beat like towards the end as well was you know was a, an interesting choice definitely but I don't know if it does anything for me in terms of like I don't know if this is a song that I will go to to replay on a constant basis, if you get what I mean. Um, it would definitely be something like maybe I may listen to once in a while, but I don't think it has that replay factor for me. Um, but I love the lyrics. The lyrics are really, really sweet. And, you know, kind of saying like I've become like a better person as I've been with you. And it's just like a really um, sweet song just in general, at least from what I gathered from the lyrics that I read. So now we're going to listen to 24-7. This song was written by Kenzie, who I absolutely love. She is amazing. You guys know how I feel about Kenzie if you're watching any of my first listens when it, in regards to EXO or SHINee and she's always on it. Like she is the queen of like songwriting, like I absolutely adore her. And music was by Harvey Mason Jr. The Wavies, The Wildcards, Aaron Burton and uh, Andrew Hay and arrangement by The Wavies and The Wildcards. Oh, this is my kind of vibe right here. Hey! No, this is Suho's song. This is Suho's song. I don't care what anyone says, this is song. Okay, apparently we're just singing in our falsettos and head voices, and I'm fine with that. These songs are sad. <laughs> okay. Hey. singing this part like that lazy way of singing okay. oh was that Chanyo and Kyunsu and like that whistle sound yeah, see, from that whistle sound at the beginning, I knew I was going to like the song. Really appreciate that, actually. I love that song. I just love the entire vibe. I, I like how I was kind of concentrated on them singing with their falsettos and head voices. As it was going along, I thought I was going to get... It was going to get to the point where the falsettos was going to start to get, get to me. Because sometimes when people sing in falsetto, it's nice when it's like thrown in here and there. Or if you like Maxwell, who can sing like a whole song in falsetto and still make it so that you're not like completely overwhelmed. I thought it was going to get really overwhelming as it went along, but I actually really enjoyed um, having all the different voices and obviously them switching to back to chest voice and then moving back again. But um, yeah, it was a really, really like chill vibe. Like, yeah, vocally? Suha at the beginning of the song, oh my God, like he was going for it. Like he was killing it like i don't think i've heard um him singing falsetto for that long so that was really like lovely to hear and obviously it's always nice to hear um kyungsu's falsetto because i feel like he doesn't use it as often as he should um but um yeah it was nice to hear a little bit of that as well 
um, love the different parts where they would pair up. So I think towards the end, I think it was Chanyo and Kyungsu, but they did like another duo section, um, which was really fun to listen to. But um, yeah, this was definitely one of my favorites. I think this is definitely in, like my top three favorites out of the songs I've listened to so far. It was just my kind of vibe. Like I just, I feel like it's a song that I just needed to listen to um, at this very m moment in time. So yeah, thoroughly enjoy that. So now we're going to listen to Bad Dream and this was written by Soji Um who has actually written a lot for Shiny. Um, so yeah, it's nice to see them here as well. And also written for um, Red Velvet. Music by Michael Daly, Mitchell Owens, Bianca Blush Arterberry and Dees and arrangement by Mike Daly and Mitchell Owens. I like what this is going on right Well, we need to pause this because I was not ready. I really wasn't ready. I'm sorry. Like, what? Like, how are you going to start off like that? You're giving me, like, your 90s R&B type vibes. You know what I mean? And then the way they progress into this, like, more mid-tempo beat. I was not ready for that. I was not ready at all. <laughs> Okay, they're using the wind as a metaphor. This is my song. This is my song. I just post to tell you guys that that this is my song, basically. <laughs> you give me the fucking harmonies! Oh my god! Okay. Did you hear that from Kyungsu? Lord have mercy. Oh my gosh, is that going to be cute? Listen, the cute really out here. This song just keeps going. Excuse you, listen to my man Sehu. Oh my god. How are you gonna end it like that? You're gonna end it with rapper line. No. No, 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 no. Was I ready for that song? No, let's go. Let me just take another sip. Listen, I've almost finished this one, you know. I was not ready. Listen, I was not ready. I really wasn't ready. I was not ready for them type of vocals. Like, I know there were like seven vocals already, but like those type of vocals? To hear it like that? Oh my god! That was R&B Bob that I was waiting for. This one kind of reminded me of like some of the productions on early um, Destiny's Child like Dark Child type productions. Like it just gave me that kind of vibe. So I was already like here for the song but when you add them type of vocals on top of that those harmonies 
just the background vocals alone like if we take away the main vocals and just listen to the background vocals on this album listen like i was having the time of my life okay they sounded so good like everyone had their time to shine on the song like really and truly like everyone had their moment in the song like i could hear everyone clearly i just thought the way it was arranged produced everything about it was just solid and i wasn't even really paying attention to the lyrics here because it was just so good like it was just so good to me like this is my song okay this is my song definitely at the top of my list so far like vocally you guys know how i feel about them harmonies like you already know like when the harmonies are that tight i'm always here for it okay whilst i'm massaging my <laughs> my leg this was a bad idea i don't know why i felt more prompted to do this versus it now but you know what? i'm glad i've done it because now I, once it's done it's done um so the next song <laughs> is damage and this was written by Shin Jin here, um, who is part of Jam Factory, which is like a massive music collective of producers, composers, writers. Yeah, incredible. Um, and uh, music was by London Noise again, Dees and Adrian McKinnon. Oh my gosh, we've got another one? Okay, super excited. Okay, one of my favourite songs is Damage and by Danny Tikane. So if it's anything like that or on the same level of that kind of greatness, then that's all great okay okay not what i was expecting that's how you i like bigness voice mm. it's just so sweet okay guys okay hey Okay, I'm starting to get into this song a little bit. Okay, Chen, just flexing on us with his range. As you can see, I'm still dancing. Okay. Oh, why that section? Very interesting progression. Okay. Okay, this is definitely feeling more like uh, a follow up to exact um or like the lo loto um repack. Like in terms of like the the way they're experimenting with like the sounds here and like going for, for more of like that heavy bass line, um that sort of like nitty and gritty type type dirty bass do you get what i mean like it's kind of going for that um i don't know how i feel about this song because on the one hand like just on the on 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 a general level i can bop to it like you know what i mean it still makes you want to dance still makes you want to twerk but i don't know if i'm completely sold on it like i don't know if like i'm like blown away by it do you get what i mean like, i don't know if like it's like entirely complete for me but at the same time like i'm not completely mad at it which is I don't know I I'm I'm having a hard time with this one I'm I am but vocally still a fucking point I mean they were giving us vocals they were giving us harmonies they were giving us rods they were giving us ad libs okay and that for me is enough to enjoy a song but yeah I don't know I don't know this yeah this song is this album is definitely like giving me like a mixture of different things but like I said I feel like it's more closer in terms um to exact than any other album for me like oh and maybe 
like some of the um edm songs from exodus like lady luck and transformer like it's giving me some of that type of vibe so the next song is smile on my face this is written by um jq and park jihi um and music by brian kennedy ian james and samuel jensen Okay, the girl really messed them up in this album, you know. when they do this little like the little duets okay Shubi. jesus christ this vocal line is good like resolving the song but yeah that was a very interesting interesting song actually um it kind of gave me a walk on memories is it lights out on the universe album like it definitely felt more suited to like the the universe album but um i really enjoyed it actually i really enjoyed the vocals really enjoyed the harmonies i really like that chill relaxing vibe of it all it definitely felt like um, Chen's style so I, he was obviously killing it almost like a R&B lullaby like it was just I don't know it was just really interesting to listen to and um, the vocals were amazing I love when they had that little duets in the middle as well um, and yeah I don't know it's just I just felt like I was floating listening to that okay so now we're on to the last song on the album um, obviously I've listened to Tempo the, that Mandarin version so I'm gonna listen to that so the last song on the album here is Oasis um, and this is written by Joe Yung Kyung and music by Kevin White, Mike Woods, Andrew Bassey and MZMC. Okay. Okay. Listen, you're not gonna do this to me. How are you gonna have the last song be the one that really, really captures me? Okay, let's just listen to it. You guys know how much I love pauses in the so like song. Baekhyun is doing the most in this album. Suho really... Stop it! No! Okay, Chanyo! Listen, Big Yard, we're gonna fight like you're doing the most. Good companion to El Dorado. 
based on the lyrics. Oh my god, Kyogsu, I swear to god. Kyungsoo was doing the most in that. Okay, let me just, let me just, you know. Okay, so. I love that song. I love that song. I need to work out if that's my favourite or if Bad Room is my favourite. It's between those two at the moment. Oh my gosh, the way that song started, like, I feel like I just met my match. But... Wow, yeah, I really enjoyed that production. Really, really enjoyed the vocals, the pauses. I love when songs utilize pauses and, you know, do it in a way that it really highlights the vocals. Um, and also kind of make you appreciate the just the actual production because, you know, when it pauses and it goes back into the actual beat, you I, I feel like you appreciate it a little bit, a little bit more, you know, because you have that little bit of silence to kind of like absorb everything and then it goes back to the beat and you're like oh right like wow okay that's how the beat sounds but yeah like i really really enjoyed the vocals in this like oh my god like i feel like this the production this wasn't as overpowering like it was i don't think it was like super complicated to listen to so it you know you could really really enjoy um just them harmonizing and you know giving you the ad-libs and all that stuff oh my gosh but um, Baekhyun, Kyungsu, and um, Chen, Chen, Chen always does the most on these albums with his vocals. Like, we, we, we've been new when it comes to Chen, but I really, really enjoyed Baekhyun and um, Kyungsu on this. And also, you know, really, really enjoyed Kai as well. But, oh my gosh, can I just say, I really, really enjoy um, Chan Yo singing on this album. Like, it's always nice to hear Chan Yo singing because his tone is so different to everyone else's and it's kind of low. And there's, there's like this little slight grit to it that I really personally enjoy. So um, it's always lovely to hear him sing and I really enjoy that. And oh my gosh, I don't know. Like I really, really enjoy the song actually. Really enjoy the Hi. song. As you can like, see, I'm wearing different clothes. That means it's a different day. It's actually a week after I did the first listen to Don't Mess Up My Tempo. Um, but yeah, I'm just jumping in here because um, I was going through my footage for my first listen and to be fair, if you guys see, like I did mention I was super super tired, it was like towards the end of the day, it was like a very long week um, and when I got to the summary bit, like I was practically just kind of not making any coherent thought because I was super tired and I couldn't even remember like the songs I'd listened to by the time I got to the end of it um, so I wasn't able to give like a satisfactory summary, like the one I would, I would usually give um, so I decided to like refilm this um, now. So I feel like my second listen um, of the album was felt much better than my first listen. And as you can see, um, I've made some annotations um, to indicate like the, the things I found interesting as I had it uh, after a few times, the things I wasn't able to hear because I was super tired and obviously you know, some of the things just kind of went over my head. Um, but I feel like the second listen just I, it made me enjoy it even more. Like I absolutely, absolutely um, appreciate some of the background um, instruments that I couldn't hear in the production and the vocals even more. I mean, I appreciate the vocals even when I was tired, but like I couldn't even appreciate them even more when I, you know, had my earphones in and could really process everything that was going on. Um, but even more so, um, I think... Um, some of the songs that I initially was like a bit iffy about, I definitely um, appreciated even more when I was able to, you know, listen to them with a more of a clearer mind and everything. Um, so yes, we were just going off. Um, I think um, I can confidently say now that I definitely prefer this album to Exact. As you know, Exact was pretty much the most experimental um, sort of sound that EXO had um, attempted. Um, and for me, some of the songs definitely matched up to my kind of taste and some of the songs didn't really match up to my taste and some of them, it took me a while to kind of really grow to love them. For example, like Artificial Love, the first time I heard it, it was so confusing to me that it took a few, like, listens and I was like, oh, okay, this is my song now, so it's one of my favourite songs on the album. Actually, my favourite um, B-side on that, on that album now. Um, as I mentioned previously in my first listen that um, I felt that this album was actually more of a follow-up to um, Exacted than um, obviously uh, The War was. It just obviously we were introducing those kind of like experimental beats and stuff and um, I don't know, there was just this vibe about it that felt like yes, this is definitely more of like the Exact slash um, Loto repackage kind of kind of going off from that but for me I definitely preferred this more because um, I just feel like 
and a lot more, more of the songs were more tailored to my taste i feel like i warmed up to the songs a bit more quickly than i did with exact and not that that's a, a measure of like how good a song is or anything but sometimes for me like for me to keep wanting to listen to a song i kind of have to warm up, warm up to it from the beginning um um but um obviously that's not the case all, all the time but um it, that's kind of the case for me you like for, for the most part that's kind of how it is for me like i like i like having that instant enjoyment of songs personally um and you can tell on my face when i absolutely love a song and with exo i can always tell when i have a favorite song it's it's just completely instant it just grabs my attention i'm like yes that is my favorite song and exact uh, was still a good album it was still a, a, a beautiful masterpiece it's very cohesive it was just like not quite my kind of style of music so yeah let's just go through my favorites um i definitely love bad dream even though i've listened to it a few times now it's still one of my favorites definitely um i think next would be oasis i, I don't know oasis and bad dream like they go head to head, head on certain days <laughs> but um yeah i love i love i love the production on those like it just absolutely captured my my senses i was like yes this is my song um totally loved it um really really like gravity as well like the vocals and gravity is insane that we've got this like 80s pop dance vibe to it as well it just makes you feel like you are just on this like massive dance floor and just giving living your best life not even 80s i feel like it's more 70s actually um in terms of style so it, i just, it was just living my best life anytime i listen to gravity and it's just absolutely amazing like they just take it there with the vocals um so we've got yeah bad dream oasis gravity um, oh my god ooh la 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 as well okay um i don't know okay gravity and and ooh la la pretty much tied for me it depends on what day i'm having you know what i mean because you I, I do like my slow songs i tend to prefer slow songs to upbeat songs just in general so depending on what day i'm having i may prefer ooh la 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 more and you know sometimes i may prefer gravity more so they're pretty much tied for me in, in third place you know what i'm gonna put tempo because tempo is actually a really good title track you know what when i think about my title tracks now i think i might put tempo it doesn't beat call me baby i don't care what anyone says it still doesn't beat call me baby for me i think production wise i think stylistic wise i think experimentation wise i think it definitely beats monster but monster is to my jam um and um yeah but i definitely think it's a top five fave Title track like the more you listen to it and the more you appreciate those like harmonies and the different breakdowns and that acapella section oh my god absolutely stunning and the chankai breakdown just just it's such a funky beat and I, like i said it has this like daft punk like um homage to it that i really enjoy as well so definitely a great one so i think i'll put that as four did i say fourth no no yeah fourth and um oh god i really oh 24 7 is my jam i think i'll put is it sign yeah sign then smile on my face actually smile on my face is a really good song okay let's say let's go with sign smile on my face damage and then with you as i mentioned with with you honestly it's not a bad song it really isn't but like i said like i feel like if it didn't have that fast pace beat on it like i wouldn't mind it at all i think it would definitely be higher on my list but because for me if there's a sound there that i can't seem to tune out it kind of ruins the song for me but it's really not a bad song but this is just like my opinion and my personal taste so, but um yeah overall i thought it was a you know, stunning album i thought it was a really cohesive album i think in the track list it made sense i think um there definitely seemed to be like a theme going on even with some of the lyrics as well um there was this like underlying gritty griminess of you know those like edm dubstep -y type beats and those like really grisly like bass lines but then also you have like the really soft melodies and stuff like that like you're going on a smooth ride and obviously if you wanted like something more exciting you have like those like pulsating beats like you basically like you're pushing on an accelerator and just revving up those wheels and going for it see what they did there so yeah it, it, i felt like they definitely had like they had a cohesive theme going on so yeah um, but yeah, this video is hella long. I apologize. But you guys want a comprehensive review and I'm here to give you that. So deal with it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I enjoy the album. If you're like me and you like have a similar taste to me, I think, yeah, the more you listen to it, the more it, it keeps getting better. But I, if for me, it doesn't really beat my other favorite albums for me i think it's more like a third favorite album at the po at this point so i think it my favorite is still exodus just because i'm very 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 stubborn okay and with exodus like my favorite my 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 
complete favorite EXO song is on there. So I feel like unless they top What If, like unless they top that, I feel like it will still remain my favorite EXO album. But I can appreciate that look, as the albums have gone by, they have gotten better with the harmonies. It just, the vocals just seem to get better and better and better for me. Productions always seem to be more intricate, more experimental. They seem to be more trying different things out and different genres, which I'm always appreciative of. Even if I'm not completely in love with some of them, I still appreciate them trying out different things. Um, and yeah, my second favorite album is still The Wall. Like that album still, to this day, to this day, I'm still shooketh when I listen to what you do. Like it still sends me on a high going crazy. Like I'm still obsessed with that album um, to this day. So um, yeah, so I think it's a third favorite and I'll put exact afterwards as well. Um, so yeah, I think overall good album nice comeback i don't know how this like, comeback is even growing at the moment it's a bit weird like in in terms of comebacks but then again sm has kind of jam-packed a lot of comebacks in this november like they're trying to put out everything before december hits which is ridiculous but we'll see but anyways let me know what you guys think about this first listen i know it's really late um but you know at least it's here <laughs> and uh, let me know what your favorites are let me know what your order is now in terms of favorite albums of exo as well and yeah just discuss in the comments section below let me know what your thoughts are keep it civil and yeah hope you guys have a lovely day and i'll see you guys later bye bye Today